hopefully it's not too bad. But regardless, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are continuing in a, in a series on the book of, of 2 Timothy. And so for us, today, the question I want to ask you guys is, do you have good endurance? <clears throat> so he says yes. So for those of you, especially like, I guess for me when I was in PE class and physical education, I really hated long distance running. I didn't understand the point. I said, this is not enjoyable. I know we have like a long distance former, long distance runner in the back, and you kind of snicker at the um, But you know, the, I didn't mind sprinting that much, because there was kind of like that, like, I don't know, like, like competitiveness and like running side to side with someone. But when you're doing long distance running, that distance gets further and further. Basically, at the end, you're basically walking. <laughs> but, but you know, I don't know. For me, endurance wasn't something I was I was very blessed with, and I know for some of you guys, you guys were kind of on the same boat with me in terms of shaking your heads. But regardless, well, I just want you to think about endurance because as we talked last week, Paul we talked about sharing in suffering, and so last week the focus was more on in the midst of suffering to not be ashamed and choose to instead uh, to to be loyal, to be loyal to the gospel, to be loyal to those who have stood in faith before us. But now he's going to bring in the issue of enduring that suffering. So with that, um, we're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 13, 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 13, on your Bibles, smartphones, or look at the screen. 2 Timothy 2, from verse 1, where the Lord says this, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses can trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does, uh, does not receive the, the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying. If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he, will, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Um, again, our theme for this year, 2019, is one of holiness, understanding that God himself is a holy God. There is none like him, but as those that are called to be his people, we too are called to be holy, to be set apart, to become more like him. Now we've been going through this book of 2 Timothy, and we saw early on that, that Timothy was, was dealing with struggles as a young pastor, and, 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 and struggling with, with many issues at, at, at this, this church of Ephesus that had been, had been entrusted to him. And Paul reminded him that God did not give him a spirit of timidity, but one of power, love, and self-discipline that only comes from the Holy Spirit. And then last week we saw Paul was, was really encouraging him to not be ashamed of the gospel, to not be ashamed of this good deposit, this good news, and that the Holy Spirit would give him the strength to not only guard it, but to, to proclaim it, to live it, to suffer for it. And so last week, um, we were left with these two examples of people that were loyal and people that were disloyal. And so in the beginning, Phygelus and Hermogenes were shown as two people that were disloyal to Paul. They turned their backs on Paul. But this man, Onesiphorus, even though Paul was in chains, Paul was being treated as a criminal, and everyone was ashamed of him, this man sought him out, sought out to bless him, sought out to encourage him, even at the point of risking his own life. And so with these examples, with these examples, Paul now turns back to Timothy and says, You then my son. The literal word he's using there is my child. You then my child. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 
Now, brothers and sisters, for some of you, um, you may understand this connection already, but for me, I always connect the story of Paul and Timothy with Moses and Joshua. And for those of you know, that know the book of Joshua, in the very, the very beginning, chapter 1, God himself is encouraging Joshua, and continually he keeps saying this one thing, be strong and courageous. And for me, as I look at this passage and I see Paul, I see that same echo where Paul is saying, be strong. I'm about to die. And I'm passing on my ministry to you. And I know you're afraid. I know you're struggling as a young minister. But be strong. But be strong in the grace of Jesus Christ. You are empowered. So when he says be strong, the literal translation is be empowered by the, the, by the grace of Jesus Christ. This gift of salvation that comes from Jesus' death on the cross. This is what empowers you. This is what enables you to continue this ministry that I have already started. And so Paul is encouraging Timothy in this way. And then he reminds him that these things that I've taught you, it's not just me. They have been said in the presence of many witnesses. So there are many people who are in agreement. It's so basically Paul is saying, my teaching is sound. What I have taught you is truly from the word of God. This is, there's no falsity to this. This is truth. You are entrusted with this. And with this that you have been given, entrust this to other people. Entrust this good deposit, these teachings, this gospel, this good news of Jesus Christ to people that are capable of teaching others. Trustworthy people. So what Paul is basically telling Timothy is, you should be raising up your own Timothys. You should be raising up your own disciples. You should be encouraging people that are qualified to teach. You should be finding these younger people and passing on this, this duty because it's not just for you. This is the model that we follow, brothers and sisters. Christianity is not about a handful of charismatic leaders that carry the burden by themselves. No. Jesus raised up 12 disciples. He shared the load. And he encouraged all of his disciples to raise up future disciples. This great commission, Matthew 28, that we always talk about when we talk about missions and evangelism, the only imperative, the only command in the great commission is make disciples. Brothers and sisters, this is a duty that we're all called to. Regardless of how young or late in the faith that we are, we have a responsibility continually raise up young leaders. This is how the church works. And for those of you that might feel, you know, it's not my time yet, I'm too young, you will be surprised what God can do through you, regardless of your age. You will be surprised. So brothers and sisters, let's encourage each other to, to keep raising each other up, to keep encouraging those that have not yet that have taken that mantle to, to be blessed by serving. Brothers and sisters, I can tell you from experience, the person that gains the most in ministry is the person who is serving. Like when you talk about Bible study, the person who learns the most is the person leading the Bible study. Right? People in the study, they will learn some things, but the person who gets the most out of anything is always the teacher. And so brothers and sisters, is actually a blessing. At times we look at it as, oh, this is, too much responsibility, this is too hard, but this is how we grow. This is how we stretch ourselves. As Paul, Paul is reminding Timothy, as you are being stressed, as you are, are growing, I know it's hard, but look for others to share the load with you. Look for others to continually to pass down this responsibility to others. And then he continues. He says the same thing that he said last week. In, in chapter 1, verse 8, where he said, join me in my suffering. He says again, join me in suffering. And as I said last week, this is a message that I think that our generation has forgotten. You feel like suffering should be avoided. We see suffering and we run away, right? But brothers and sisters, that is not actually what we're called to do. Brothers and sisters, suffering is actually something that we're meant to endure. Something is, suffering is something that we're meant to be face on. I'm not saying it's easy. Right? 
There might be some weird people out there that are like, oh, suffering's so good. But, you know, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think that's normal. But I will tell you that suffering is necessary for growth. If someone never suffers, they will never be able to overcome whatever obstacle they meet. You know, it's like that, that, that mother bird that when you have this little uh, chick or whatever that's, that's, that's just born, kicks them out so that they have to fly, right? Now, some of those chicks might die, but brothers, but that's how you grow is you face adversity. Now, for, for me, brothers, this is, uh, you know, when I went to university, uh, I went out of state, right? Now, Korea is a little bit different. Um, but for me, you know, I, I wanted to challenge myself to go outside of my comfort zone. So I left my state, went to another state, and it was very difficult. I only knew one person, and I wasn't that close to him, and he, wasn't, he, he didn't really help me. So basically, I was on my own. But I learned so much about myself through that process. Now, there's some of you that have actually not only gone out of state, you've gone out of the country. There's some of you that have gone to international universities. Right? Some of you here in Korea, you're not from Korea, right? You came here for school. And that in itself is a whole other challenge, right? Not only are you in a, a different environment, but you're in a place where the, the language is different, the culture is different, and I can only imagine how many things you're dealing with. But brothers and sisters, it's through this type of suffering, it's through these types of hardships that we grow. So I want you to remember that suffering isn't necessarily meant to be avoided. Paul himself is telling Timothy, this very person who he calls my son, suffer with me. Right? It's a very weird thing for us, because I don't know any parent that would be like, you know, suffer with me, I just agree. But you know, like it's like I don't know anything like that. But that's actually what Paul is teaching us. And that suffering is meant to be endured together. So he gives three examples of, of how we're able to suffer, and it has a lot to do with having the right focus. Because honestly, brothers and sisters, when you're going through a difficult time, if you're just focused on that very moment, life is really hard. But if you look through these examples, if you have a better focus, if you are looking further ahead to something greater, then you can endure. And so I want to remind you that the examples that we're going to go through that Paul just shared are more about enduring suffering because you have the right focus in mind. You're not looking at your situation right now. So the first is a soldier. And so I wanted to put us an example of a soldier who is not... What's up, Tom? <laughs> so, 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 you know... Paul, Paul talks about a soldier that's not distracted by civilian affairs. This soldier is very distracted by civilian affairs. This soldier is distracted by, what is that, a, a Christmas yodel? Um, but, but this soldier is, is not focused on his duties. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to apologize later because I have you in the next slide. <laughs> So here, now, for, now, brothers and sisters, now I think for every guy, every guy I know, I this is you know, Band of Brothers is a miniseries made many years ago by Steven Spielberg. It's 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 violent, right? It's because it's war. It's showing a very, a very realistic depiction of war. But brothers and sisters, I invite any man, anyone who calls himself a man. This is something you have to watch because this is. If you're, you're not a man until you see Band of Brothers, because this is about the, a troop of soldiers, and honestly, this, these are real stories. This is based off of the lives of real people. So when you're watching it on screen, that's exactly what happens. And you see these, these, these men, and some of them break under pressure, and some, some of them just, just can't handle the pressure, and some of them rise up. But they do it as brothers. And so I encourage all men, like, this is something you need to watch and understand because this is what masculinity is. And I'm not talking about just like in a biblical sense, I think this is what it is. Now in a biblical sense, you know, you throw a Bible in there and they're doing Bibles together, you know, then, then, then that's a little bit better. But, but regardless, soldiers are supposed to focus. They're not supposed to be distracted. The reason why is because 
They want to please their superiors. They want to, superior, to please those that are giving them orders because if they don't listen to these orders, then people die. Right? That's the reality of war. If a commanding officer says something and the people below him do not immediately follow, then people die. That's reality. And so, brothers and sisters, I encourage you as you think about this model of the soldier, a good soldier is one who obeys his commander. And for us as Christians, as good soldiers of Christ, we have the perfect master, we have the perfect commander, but we have to trust him. We cannot be distracted. So when we think about the soldier, the soldier is not distracted. But the soldier focuses on pleasing his commanding officer. So when we get to the athlete, sorry, Salman. Um, so you have this athlete here. Um, so again, I was talking about Salman because he used to be a long distance runner. Wow. If you look at his face, like wow. honestly, I think Salman, this is like maybe one third of your weight. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but, but regardless, Look at his face, he's focused, right? Now, honestly, I don't know if he won anything, but regardless, what the passage tells us is those that are athletes, they focus on the prize. They focus on the victor's crown, so they're focused on success. Now, back then, the Olympics were already in existence. Back then, when you, when you trained for the Olympics, it was an 11-month commitment. So you were giving up an entire year to focus on competing, right? And what the passage is telling, what the passage tells us today is those that are competing for the victor's crown, they go according to the rules. Right? They follow the rules. Right? Now unfortunately we look at sports today and rules have been broken like crazy, right? Steroids, um, like the, the Russian thing like recently became like, like big news. So unfortunately, this has become very tainted. But brothers and sisters, what Paul is trying to teach us is that if you want to compete and if you are focused on that crown, then you will follow the rules. We are living in a society today, brothers and sisters, that is more about cutting corners, that is more about moving into moral ambiguity rather than following the straight, and, uh, the straight path. And so I encourage you guys, brothers and sisters, when you're going through suffering, don't look for the easy way out. But understand that you are focused on the end. You are focused on being the, the victor's crown. So you will abide by the rules. You will abide by what honors and glorifies God. Now lastly, we talk about the farmer. I grew up on a farm. It's not what I couldn't find any pictures of with you and the farmer. I had to give up on that. But, but I was going to use them for all day if I could. But anyway, for me, I grew up on a farm. A very small farm. It was only about three and a half acres. But uh, we grew green vegetables. We were the only people in the state of Maryland that had green vegetables. So every Korean in Maryland came to our house and bought vegetables. We sold it really cheap. It was like 25 cents for like a bunch of like uh, tin and stuff like that. And, but the thing is, I hated this because I had to pick this. Right? I was a little kid, a little kid. I was picking candy. And then I was picking kochu, right? And, and because of this, for many years, I couldn't eat this. Every time I saw a piece of candy, I was like, uh, don't give that to me. And so I, I grew up on a farm, so I understand what farming entails. You work hard, right? You wake up really early before the sun rises. You're tending the ground. And my dad still does this. He has a bunch of greenhouses in Yangpyeong that he's taking care of. And so, so I understand what it means. Farming is hard work, so the passage focuses on the good farmer, the hard-working farmer. And it creates the suwanan, uh, the, the hard-working father or farmer. And it says that those that work hard, they get first dibs, they get the first fruits. So they're focused on the first fruits. They're focused on the on, on what is coming. But brothers and sisters, one thing that, that isn't implicitly stated but is very true is no matter how diligent you are as a farmer, you can't control the rain. So no matter how hard working a farmer is, they still depend on God. If 
God doesn't send the rain, they don't get no food. But when you put all these three things together, you're basically being told three things. The soldier avoids distractions, avoids getting involved in civilian affairs because he is focused on pleasing his commanding officer. The athlete follows the rules because the athlete is focused on the prize and does not want to be disqualified. And lastly, the farmer is diligent, is hardworking because the farmer is thinking about those first fruits that harvest, right? Today we're, we're celebrating uh, like basically like a harvest. Was that a Korean moment? Oh, like like so it's like a harvest season in Korea. So we're, 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 we're focusing on, on those things. And, I, and actually, brothers and sisters, for those of you that, that, that don't know, this is actually our, our anniversary Sunday at this church. Um, so this church, the main church, which is over there, was started in 1975 on July 4th. Right? So it's been 44 years. 44 years of church has, has been doing a lot of ministry, 44 years of, of diligence, of avoiding distraction, of following the rules. And, um, and so we stand here, as our head pastor said, enjoying the fruits of the many that have worked before us. Okay. Now my uncle is the founding pastor of this church and he used to joke uh, with, with his family that uh, you know every year the army base in Yongsan celebrates this church's birthday. <laughs> By shooting fireworks, July 4th, right? So it's like, oh, and so, so he would watch the fireworks and go, like, oh, that's for us. <laughs> and so, so you know, this is, this is a, we're standing in a place, in a church that has been faithful for a long time. And so I think, you know, this adds to these models that we are given. That for those that focus on what is correct, are focusing on the prize, on the end, can endure suffering. Paul closes that section by saying, think about these things and God himself will give you insight. So I encourage you guys, brothers and sisters, as you, as you meditate on some of the things that we're talking about today, and as you think about these models that Paul talks about, that God will give you insight, further insight on how you can endure, how you can persevere in the faith. And then Paul continues, and he brings up more examples. He says, remember Jesus Christ. Remember me, the one who is, is, is imprisoned in chains. And so he says, Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. In a very simple way, Paul says many things. Jesus was raised from the dead. He conquered death. He did not die on the cross. He was raised again. So there is something supernatural. Jesus is the Son of God. And then secondly, he says, descended from David. So not only was he born, but he comes from the line of promise, the, the promise that, that was given to King David, but also started with Abraham. In a very simple phrase, Paul encapsulates all of what makes Jesus who he is. He is both the Son of God, but he is also the Son of Man. He is both divine, and he is both human. He has conquered death. He has conquered sin. Remember him. Now, the reason why Paul is saying this is because at this very moment, because of Paul's change, because of the humiliation that he's facing, many people are saying negative things about the gospel of Jesus Christ. How can you follow someone that died as a criminal? And Paul is reminding him, remember who Jesus really is. He didn't just die as a criminal. He rose from the dead. He conquered is the Son of God. And then he says, remember me. I am suffering chained as a criminal. Now this word criminal in the, word, in, in the Greek is only used one other time. It's in the Gospel of Luke where Jesus Christ has these two criminals next to him. That's the only time that word is used. So this word in Greek criminal is basically meant for someone that's about to go, like a criminal that's about to die. Right? Someone on death row. Paul is saying, this is who I am. But remember that I am suffering. Now Paul said it in, uh, in chapter 1, that I am a prisoner, not of Rome, but I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Jesus brought me to this. And for this, I die for his glory. And so Paul reminds Timothy that the reason why he's suffering is because of the gospel, because of the good news of Jesus Christ. 
then he turns us around and says, I am chained, but the word of God will never be chained. His word stands forever. So even though you look at me and people might mock me, people might say all these bad things about me, no one can say anything about the word of God. Because the word of God is true. So brothers and sisters, he then turns around and says, Endure all things. Endure everything. Suffering is meant to be endured. Right? Suffering is not meant to be avoided. Suffering is meant to be endured. Like the athlete, like the soldier, like the farmer. Suffering is meant to be endured. And so here he says, I endure everything for the sake of others. For these people that don't know Jesus Christ, I am suffering for them. And so through that, Jesus Christ is bringing salvation. Through that, His gospel is being proclaimed for His eternal glory. So this human need, people that don't know Jesus, is being met by the divine power of Jesus Christ on the cross. And so brothers and sisters, basically what He's saying is, suffering isn't meant to be avoided, it's meant to have a purpose. There is suffering that has no purpose. That is not what I'm encouraging you to do. But I am reminding you that when you suffer for the gospel, when you suffer for proclaiming what is truth, what is life, what is good and great, then there is a purpose to it. Okay? Anything that has any value, anything that, that is, is worthwhile, requires either suffering or cost. Right? Right, these days, you know, myself included, a lot of us are, are trying to lose weight, right? And there's some people that try to go around that and do different things, but the only real reason, the only way you can lose weight is you gotta suffer. Right? <laughs> Either eating less, working out more, doing both, right? That's how you actually get results, right? So in, in that way, suffering is meant to have a purpose. We are being taught by Paul suffering in light of the gospel. Suffering for the truth. That is what we are meant to seek out. He concludes by saying, as Trust is saying, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure with him, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. Here, Paul is talking about those that just turn away from the faith and, and, and just curse God. Right? When, so when someone disowns Jesus Christ, they're blatantly turning away from the faith. But for those that are faithless, what it says in verse 13, for those that struggle with, with, with maintaining their relationship with God and it's up and down, he says, you know what? He's still faithful to you because he cannot disown himself. You can disown him, but he can't disown you. Unless you do it first. So brothers and sisters, we're encouraged to right in the middle, verse 12, to endure. Right? This is really the theme of this entire passage. Endure, endure, endure. Right? That's why I asked you that question. Who's got good endurance? Because brothers and sisters, I can encourage, I can remind you, and I can just speak truthfully that for those of you that call yourself believers, you will they suffer. That's just reality. That's truth. And even for those of you that don't even believe in Jesus, you are going to suffer too. Suffering is a, a guarantee. That is life. But the question is, will you endure that suffering? Will you press on? Especially if it's suffering that comes from your belief in Jesus Christ. So my encouragement for us today, brothers and sisters, is for us to seek perseverance by keeping the right focus, right? Like the soldier that is focused on his commanding officer, pleasing him. The athlete that is focused on that victor's crown, that, that success that, that, that he's seeking. The farmer that is focused on those first fruits that are coming if he remains diligent. So brothers and sisters, when you go through suffering, when you have a hard time, when you fix your eyes just in that moment, life stinks. I want you to look further ahead. Because as difficult as that season might be, there is something worthwhile that is on the horizon.
there is something worth that suffering. And I encourage you guys to fix your eyes on that instead so that you can endure. So brothers and sisters, let's be reminded that this gospel of grace that we receive from Jesus Christ is what empowers us. We are able to endure because we're able to fix our eyes on what is the right focus. And always, brothers and sisters, we must be raising up those that are around us, encouraging those that are young in the faith to grow, to be challenged, to be expanded, and to do things they didn't know they were capable of. With that, let's take some time to pray before us. Brothers and sisters, I want to take a moment to just ask God, God, help me to have the right focus. For many of us, we might be distracted in quote-unquote civilian affairs. You know, these things might be important to us, you know, whether it's, it's your, your grades, whether it's your career, um, your relationship status, your children, whatever it might be. There are so many different things that we can put our focus on, but I want us to ask God, God, what should my proper focus be? If it's not you, help me to make it you. Help me to make it seeking to be, to please my commanding officer, my, my perfect master. Help me to fix my eyes on what you desire. Let's ask God for the right folks, right? Let's pray.
that empowers us, that gives us strength and boldness. And so, Father, as we endure suffering, I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to have that right focus, that we would be focusing on pleasing you, our one true Lord. That we would remember to follow your will, your rules. And living a life that is holy and is honoring your name. And that we would be diligent, that we would be hardworking, Lord. Knowing that you will bless our diligence. Knowing that you would bless our, our hard work, Lord. But also, Lord, help us to do it in the place of community, Lord. That this would be a ministry where we are encouraged, where we are challenged, where we are blessed. Father, I particularly lift up our Bible study that's starting today. I pray, Lord, that that will be a place where community can be grown, a place where people can, can willingly lay down their struggles to receive healing, but to also receive strength.